Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. I'm Jim Hutchinson with a New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. First weekend of September and of course the three day Labor Day weekend transition time uh, here along the coast as we move from summer into fall, even though the calendar might not say that we know officially that's what's going on and don't forget it's those words that I grew up with down on LBI many moons ago. It's better in September. Speaking of September, our September edition went to print on Sunday. It's out in newsstands now. You subscribers, you've received a copy, I hope by now, the uh, monthly edition. Pick it up for plenty of surf ideas to get you through the next couple of weeks and also to help you gear up for when things really start to take off sometime in October. Uh, one of the things I'm expecting a much better fall run this year, especially with the return of so much structure along these front beaches. Uh, if you're in the Northern Ocean County uh, area, especially where all that beach replenishment has been done over the years. Last year, structure wasn't so good, but what I'm finding this year is Northern Ocean County into Monmouth County. Some of that structure is returning. So you might want to head up this Labor Day weekend, check things out post replenishment. It definitely looks a little bit better. Uh, for the fall of 2020. And of course, we started this week with this image from John at Betty and Nick's Bait and Tackle, their Facebook page. Looks like a little bluefish blitz at Island Beach State Park right there along the rocks. Hope to see more of this in the coming weeks and months here at the Jersey Shore. I'm sitting in here in front of a brand new friend, my friend Bertha here. Uh, <laughs> she's old, but uh, I did learn a valuable lesson uh, through the last month of storms that Assayas went through and we lost power here in Northern Ocean County for over 24 hours. Some people were out of power for days, lost some food in the freezer and then the refrigerator. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I got this one for a song, actually for tuna, about 10 pounds of freshly caught yellowfin from the triple Rex recently. I traded it for an old generator. Good deal, huh? Seriously, there's been a run on generators in the last well, few weeks from Assayas through Laura last week. We were expecting some worse stuff out of Laura when she came through New Jersey, but luckily we uh, were spared. The folks in Louisiana, uh, of course, as we talked about last week, we knew they weren't spared. It hit hard. But the one thing to keep in mind with these generators, uh, a lot of lives have been lost uh, in the wake of Laura down in Louisiana from people keeping these generators on to power their homes inside their garage or in a garage that's open halfway. Don't keep these things inside as you're getting a generator and preparing for the storm season because it's looking like we could have another good hurricane season. Bad if you look at it the right way. But uh, make sure you pay attention to these things. Keep them outside. And if you can get one for trading some of that triple Rex yellowfin, all you need is a little starter fluid and a couple extra pulls to get it through. The good stuff, of course, carbon monoxide poisoning being the bad stuff, the good stuff is that triple Rex yellowfin bite seems to continue on. In fact, this week, Captain Allen on the Mution let us know that he had John L. and his group out and still found those yellowfin up to 80 pounds at that same particular area, the region of the triple Rex. Uh, it's hard to burn a spot at this point because so many people have been going out there, uh, but the bite has been solid and it'll be interesting to see if those fish are still here. Another photo I got, which was really cool from Charlie's Bait and Tackle, PD over there, sent this along. Shots of 12-year-old Mako Visozzi putting the boots to those triple Rex yellowfin while fishing aboard his dad's contender, the Matador. Keep an eye out on that offshore forecast. Of course, last week I was expecting terrible things. Noah's forecast wasn't so accurate. We had a lot better days than was predicted. But again, it's always at the mercy of the weather and of course what Noah weather forecast says. Uh, but looking ahead midweek, towards this three day weekend ahead of us. Right now, first things looked, uh, first things uh, that I'm looking at for the weekend ahead is Friday, uh, appears to be the best day with three to fours. We're going three to five, three to six, Saturday and Sunday. So based on your vessel, uh, your level ex of experience and comfort, uh, you might want to really keep an eye out on that forecast. If you're not heading 50 to 80 miles out, I also got this from Nick Cicero, Comp Time Charters out of Belmar. Plenty of king mackerel, Spanish mackerel, and false albacore too, as well as a short bluefin. Not certain where these were taken, uh, but um, I've heard of some good reports at places like the Manasquan Ridge, Barnegat Ridge. In fact, Cape, Captain Dave DeGennaro of High Flyer, he's been finding a bunch of weak fish in the back in Barnegat Bay and those same old haunts He's been grass shrimping for weak fish, but when the weather allows, he gets outside and he said that the, uh, the ridge uh, has been offering some good action with uh, Bonita, 
Uh, false albacore as well. Trolling and drifting with bait offers great sport on light tackle. Any given day you can find those Spanish Max, the king mackerel, some mahi, uh, or even a stray bluefin tuna here and there as well. Now I've got reliable intel from a friend earlier this week that if you can get out to the Barnegat Ridge early enough, I'm thinking first light, stay on the lookout for some of those cobia as well. Uh, just the other day, a few days ago, uh, some friends were telling me that at first light there were plenty of cobia out there at the Barnegat Ridge, so you want to keep your eye out. And again, I've talked about this several times, no matter what you're doing, if you're going out fluking with the traditional, uh, you know, the, the bait caster and you've got light tackle spin outfits, that's great, but keep one rod uh, preferably a spinning rod outfitted and ready to throw some lures at some of those flashes. Whether it's Bonita uh, or Mahi that you might encounter on some of those pots, of course some Cobia as well. But let's get on to some fluking because we have some good reports. Uh, a monster down in Delaware, when I say a monster in Delaware, anything over 10 pounds out of Delaware is a really good fish. This one 11.48 pounds for Evan Falgowski, he checked that one into Lewis Harbor Marina in Lewis Harbor, or in Lewis, Delaware. The folks there thought it was probably a gulp grub that did the work for this 32 inch fish. But I know that those Delaware reef sites are hot. They're the places where they're producing the best flounder bite, summer flounder bite down there. 11.48 pounds is a monster by any account, but especially down in Delaware. So the Delaware reef sites, definitely a go-to place for the weekend ahead, as well as those reef sites off of Atlantic and Cape May County, Townsend, Wildwood, and of course, Cape May Reef. You might also give McCree Shoal a shot. And of course, this time of year last year, uh, was when that new state record cobia was caught. So keep an eye out for those cobia out there as well. But who fishes in 120 feet of water for fluke? My friend Captain Bob Cope does. He says he's been pressing a little bit farther east, going into that deeper water and still putting some good catches together. That's one of the fun things too, is to sit down in front of your charts to see if you can find some old wreck sites identified on the charts and say, you know what, it's a clear day, let's give it a shot. Let's head out a little farther and go to away from the fleet, but let's go find our own spot. Something you'll see in the, uh, the latest September edition of the Fisherman Magazine, we've had a regular monthly feature by Wayne Young, uh, who used to do a lot with the Maryland and Delaware artificial reef sites, but he's been using the bathymetric data viewer from NOAA Fisheries in conjunction with the Navionics app to really kind of highlight and figure out some of this structure that you wouldn't ordinarily find. So take a look at that article, use that B2V uh, viewer, and also in conjunction with your Navionics app, you might be able to go offshore in 100, 120 feet of water or more and find some of your private fluke spots as well. Near shore on some of those reef sites that I was talking about, we found out the young Pearson here got this three and a half pounder on the Ocean City Reef while fishing with his dad on the Red Beard. David Absekin Bay Sportsman Center let us know that the uh, peanut bunker were what was working uh, for some of the fluke that Pearson and his dad had caught over the weekend as well. Uh, I'm, I talk about that structure, continue heading up north, uh, Little Egg, Great Egg, uh, of course the tires out of Barnegat might be worth a shot as well. We found out this week, uh, got word that Brian Yaw had a 12 pound doormat out of Barnegat Light aboard the Finisher. That was on Sunday. So it's good to see some of those big fish out of Barnegat, but also out of Manasquan and Shark River as well. Party boats are sailing right now, offering up good shots at some of those big fish. Brian Clune, he let me know that his son schooled him this week. His son Tim Clune schooled him while fishing on the Jamaica 2. Kids getting ready to get back to school. Uh, Brian had an opportunity to take his son out in the party boats. Those party boats offer a great opportunity for you to squeeze in a last trip before the kids are heading back to school. Hopefully they're heading back to school, whether it's virtual or, uh, or in person. But again, enjoy this weekend, but don't forget about those party boats because you can always just pick up a trip and say, let's, let's head down so we can get on the boat right now. Another doormat brought aboard the big Mohawk. Uh, this summer. That was earlier this week out of Shark River for Joe Lynx. He joined that doormat uh, club with a 10 pounder aboard the Big Mohawk. Of course, reef sites, Axel Carlson, the Seagirt Reef, the Rattlesnake, and in the Shrewsbury Rocks, but that deep water on the Raritan Bay, also an option for folks looking for doormats because this is the time of year, this is the season when those big doormats on the Raritan Bay in that deep water, Raritan, uh, the Raritan Reach, Chapel Hill, Ambrose Channel, that's when you're going to get some of those big fluke. The bite has not been phenomenal, but this is the time to really start targeting those fish. And even if you don't have a boat, like young Pedrito here, He's been hitting the piers up along the Raritan Bay and doing pretty well. 
finding some of those keepers. Another good opportunity for you uh, to be on one of those piers with the family this weekend. Piers, bulkheads, and of course the walls as well. We're getting some reports from the Manasquan Seawall along the Manasquan Inlet. Uh, longtime subscriber John Kelly, he was on the seawall at Shark River. He was sabiki rigging some bait, and lo and behold, he had a quadruple header on black sea bass. I kind of wish that we had some semblance of order in terms of allowable fishing for black sea bass. Don't forget, we've got a closure on summer flounder here at the Jersey Shore, uh, September 19th, and then black sea bass doesn't open again until October 8th or 9th. So it'd be nice to have some of these sea bass to be targeting at that time in between those days of the closure. But we've also got other options, don't forget. And right now the porgy bite is starting to improve a little bit. Uh, I found out from um, uh, Tim Janis, he found this jumbo porgy aboard the Keyport Princess the other day, 16 incher, went two pounds. They had to head up to New York waters right off the Atlantic Beach Reef site for that. But I know some other folks are out looking for some of those porgies right now, doing some recon, because that's gonna be one of the things that gets us through the fall. Uh, I know that Akira at True World Marine, he's been following along with that. Captain Joe up there in North Jersey as well, uh, out of Leonardo on the sauerkraut. He's uh, still trying to find some of those really good porgy, uh, porgy bites uh, that we've had. And of course, We'll be having some of those combo trips. Uh, we're looking for porgy in between the closed days between fluke and sea bass opening in October in central and North Jersey. You go farther down into South Jersey, hopefully the trigger, uh, trigger fish bite continues. Of course, you've got the, goes, uh, those sheep's head down there as well in the back base. The three-day holiday weekend coming up offers a great opportunity to get away from, the, uh, away from the family or with the family. I always thought going out to the mountains, to the Pocono Mountains was always a great family trip. So why don't we check in with our travel agent from the Poconos, George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, it's hard to believe it's September already, and September is the month of change here in the Poconos. You know, later this month, all this greenery is going to start to change color, and the fall season is going to set in with some strength. Now, that's also a good thing for guys out wanting to get in some fish. These cooler water temps, I keep saying, is going to make that fishing pick up, and there are lots of things already starting to pick up for sure. Uh, we've had a lot of reports this week, folks getting out on fish. Again, the smallmouth bite is, is doing really, really well. Uh, Debbie Perez sent me this shot of her getting out on some nice smallmouth here in the lakes. Now also, uh, Joe Kiefer sent me a picture of the guys who are out carp fishing. And a lot of guys don't consider carp as a sport fish, but I'll tell you what, you get some of these carp up in that 10, 20, 25 pound range, and you got your hands full, so don't discount carp as, as a game fish as well. Now I reached out to the trout guys, you know, uh, Eric Goodstall, and he says the trout are doing well, but he's been spending his time out doing a little crappie fishing. Uh, Fall is one of the best times for those crappies, guys, and you can get yourself a bucket full of fillets and a nice dinner uh, in, in very short order, just an evening of fishing, so look for that crappie fishing. I also reached out to good friend Justin Lerner, and he's still out on the Passaic. Uh, he's catching pike every week, and so lots of good fish going on, and even later in the month, I think we're going to get out and get a little bit of a, a musky fishing in. Jim, what do you think? How about you and I get out and do a little musky hunting later in the month? I think that sounds like a good plan. Guys, get out and get on them. It's going to be a great season. Have a good September. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. Musky fishing sounds great, George. We're going to mark that fish off my bucket list sometime in September. In Delaware, the DNREC has reopened the point at Ken Cape Henlopen State Park. That's including the stretch of Ocean Beach and Dunes and a half mile along the bay and shoreline. The Bayside Beach will remain closed until October 1st uh, for use by shorebirds that are migrating south for the winter, but that's good news. We hit September 1st and some of that beach access returns to us. That's the same all along the Jersey Shore as well. Check with your, your local towns. Uh, all the towns are gonna be changing the beach access uh, after Labor Day weekend. So you might have access, beach buggy access to some of your favorite stretches of beach. Uh, I know that the, uh, the, the south end of Long Beach Island, Holgate, opened up as of September 1st, checked in with some friends who've already made the ride. They say that getting in and out of there is in good shape. Uh, you might want to go over to the New Jersey Beach Buggy Association's website at njbba.org 
they always have a great list of all the beach access locations throughout the state of New Jersey. Now, inshore conditions uh, over the Labor Day weekend holiday look relatively good for getting out on that fluke action or enjoying, enjoying some of the action in the surf. Maybe it's kingfish, uh, some tog, or sheep's head along the jetty rocks, especially central and south Jersey with those sheep's head. Of course, fluke are in the wash, and we're talking about some of these bluefish blitzes. blitzes. I'm hoping that some of those bonita will show up again in the next couple of weeks. I keep looking out for them. We lost the Spanish mackerel that were up there uh, on the beach hot and heavy earlier this summer. So maybe the Spanish mackerel will come back in as well. But we will be looking forward to that. Again, if you are looking at that weather forecast and you see the bays and rivers, they look pretty good. You might want to slip out in the kayak. Don't forget about the Fisherman Magazine's Coastal Kayak Clash. It's running strong. We've got another update. New Jersey subscriber getting the points up with a weak fish catch this week. We got all the details with Toby Lipinski from our New England edition of The Fisherman. Well, we have lots of changes this week in the Coastal Kayak Clash leaderboard, including a new overall leader, new top weak fish, a new top black fish, and the first hardtail entry of the season, but I'll get to those in just a moment. Now, last week I reminded everyone to get those sea robin entries in for the August Fish of the Month entries, and boy, did you listen. I think everyone who submitted a bird for a shot at the $100 gift card to Yak Attack. Now we're going to be holding off on the official announcement of all the monthly winners until the Coastal Kayak Clash concludes on November 30th, but there's still plenty of time for you to win as each month has a designated species for Fish of the Month consideration, and you got plenty of time to climb the leaderboard for a shot at winning the awesome new Old Town Sportsman 136, as well as many more awesome prizes. <clears throat> As re for remaining Fish of the Month species, uh, just to give you a heads up, September is the Combo False Albacore Bonito, or what we're calling the Hardtail category. October is the Bluefish, and November rounds things out with Blackfish. Now, speaking of those hardtails, we had the first entries hit the leaderboard this week as New York's James Erickson hit the leaderboard late last week, but he wasn't done with just one entry. Nope, he followed up with his initial entry with a quick upgrade and then another upgrade to follow that all before the final day of August. Now, what this means for you is not only are there second and third places open, but the September Fish of the Month spot remains wide open as September is the hardtail fish of the month, meaning the largest hardtail entered for September, September 1st, the final day of the month, will get you that Yak Attack gift card. So get on those funny fish, take some photos, and send them in. Now we had some other leaderboard movement this week as New England's Justin Oser dropped a nice new top tog with a 23 and a quarter inch fish, proving that the late summer blackfish bite can be quite good. This moved Justin into third place overall. Now I'm sure we're going to see more big tog rolling in over the next few months as there are more and more kayakers targeting them. Just keep in mind that we close things out in November with blackfish as the fish of the month species. And last up on the Coastal Kayak Clash this week, the top two spots swapped around as New York's Bob Wagner made a charge for first place, overcoming New England's Chris Neves with his 27 and a half inch weak fish. This is a solid entry any time this season, but especially in late summer. <clears throat> now this, annual, this entry, as I noted, also took up a top spot for the weak fish and gives Bob eight total points and sole possession of first place overall for now, but there's plenty of time for things to change between now and the end of November when the tournament ends. The Coastal Kayak Clash is open to all current subscribers of the Fisherman Magazine, and you can visit thefisherman.com right now for complete rules as well as to register for free today. Bait is stacking up in the back bays. I'm hearing of a few schoolie stripers whacking at poppers along the sedges, especially in the lower part of the state, Atlantic and Cape May County waters. We're in that transition time from summer to fall. Finger mullet, peanuts out back. They're starting to empty out of those creeks. Might be worth a shot this weekend. Outgoing tide on one of those creeks. Have a jig head, some live peanuts. Throw, those, throw a handful of live peanuts into the mouth of the creek as it's emptying out and then put a peanut bunker on a jig head. Good way of scoring a weak fish. Maybe those stripers are up there as well. But pretty soon, we're going to be back to popping along those sedges. And of course, then we'll get some of those stripers migrating in and chasing the peanuts, peanut bunker schools and those finger mullet schools soon enough. It's all happening in just another couple of weeks. Hey, enjoy the Labor Day weekend. Hopefully, you have three full days to enjoy the action. Get out there. Catch him up, and we'll see you again next week right here at thefisherman.com.
Steigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters. Serious English Chew Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.